Good morning. Here we are on a beautiful sunny day in Southampton in the UK. My name is Sean Robertson, Sales Director of Sunseeker International, and I'm here today with Christopher Head, who's Sales Director of our largest world distributor, Sunseeker London Group. And we're here today to take a really good look at this stunning 95 yacht. Chris, come on, give us a bit of a view. Well, Sean, five cabin yacht. Um, you know, it's a five cabin with its master cabin on the uh, main deck, um, obviously, which is a, a tricky job for the design team to do to still make the yacht look beautiful. And in fact, this one's got the, um, the painted window line, which actually stretches the window line to soften the look. And I have to say, you know, the design team has done, have done a magnificent job. Yeah, and it's a, it's a difficult job. I mean, at 95 feet, so sub 100 feet, five cabin with that main deck master cabin is a difficult job to achieve, still keeping it within what is quite still now a sleek silhouette. And whilst we're here, let's take a few, you know, let's take a few steps and look through the features on the outside of the yacht. So starting aft here, you can see you've got a quite well, a large side access gate. So this works well if you want a, a folding stairway, if you're moored permanently side two or occasionally, this works very well for access to the yacht rather than using the bathing platform. Coming forward, you'll notice we've got a very large drop down balcony here. Now this doubles, not only people can stand on it and you've got the water view, but also it means from inside the saloon area, you've got that view at a much lower level straight out to water. So that works very well and it's coupled with a sliding patio door on the starboard side of the saloon. As we walk forward, another feature you'll see here is it's got a um, laminated uh, capping rail running all the way through the top side, which gives it that real yacht look. It's a really nice little feature that makes this yacht stand out against its um, uh, competitors. The flush mounted windows, we've talked about this previously, so they're set in at the moulding stage, so rather than being applied afterwards onto the hull, this gives it a very flush look. And then coming forward, one of the other key features is this large uh, glazed eye, if you want, that's actually in the bulwark on both the port and starboard sides. And you'll see how important this is once we get into the master cabin and the effect that that gives of view and light in the master. So from there, I think the last point I'll leave you with is just look at the scale of the hull. This gives you a, the idea of its comfort when it's running on keeping spray away from the superstructure, giving you a really secure feel as well. When you walk down that side deck, you feel inside the boat, inside the yacht, not on top of it. So it makes a drastic difference. So with that, let's now take a look inside and we'll start with that all important master cabin. So here we are in the companionway in the forward area of the saloon and you'll see we've got stairs up to the flybridge, stairs to the lower accommodation, coming forward into this sort of secondary foyer area then we've got this beautiful door into the master cabin and look at the detail again with the leather stitch panels against the wenge which works very well. Flush door sill coming through again it's what a really soft feel you know, great carpet with underlay underneath, so it gives you a very, very good feel underfoot. Into what is a, a master cabin, again, I would say from, you know, from 110, 115 footer. So the headroom is fantastic. You've got a beautiful amount of detail on this ceiling with a combination of materials, lacquer, lighting. And into this main area, you'll see, again, key feature are these two huge, picture windows, both port and starboard. I'll push these curtains right back so you can get the feeling of that space. And if you remember at the start of the video, we talked about the windows and the bulwarks, and you can see there the effect that that gives of being able to have that visibility all the way through and out to the water. King size bed, a huge amount of space, walk around space here. Beautiful sofa on the starboard side for relaxing maybe whilst you're getting ready in the evening, maybe having your morning coffee with this movable, movable um, table here. You've got storage underneath the bed. Again, no need to lift 
the bed mattress up or anything, it's all access. You've got four drawers, two port, two starboard, two beautiful little side cabinets, again with storage in, underneath. And you'll notice here the, the proliferation of different lighting. Spotlights in the companionway area, hidden LED strip lighting behind the lacquer, and the reflection off of that gives a beautiful effect. Reading lights, flexible reading lights here, wall lights above the bed, and all of this is controlled not just by the normal switching here, but you also have the Weimar control pads, uh, which we'll see as we go out, which gives you zone settings and touchscreen control for all of the different areas of lighting. Forward, 55 inch TV with obviously AV cabinet underneath. And then what is the real party piece of this cabin is you've got this beautiful glass balustrade with handrail on top, which then if you follow these stairs down, now th this is a stairway, but it's so wide, easy, big steps. And you come down into this mid level, which is all storage, all wardrobe space. So doors all the way through with shelving, hanging, full height hanging and drawer space. And again, on the port side here again, more full height hanging and drawers and a safe underneath. Just after that on the port side, you've got a beautifully lit vanity area with mirror, power points. And what hits you all the way through this is although this is on a mid level now, down away from the natural light, because of the mirrors, the glass balustrade and the clever lighting, it's really bright and you, the feeling of space, even on this mid level is, is fantastic. And the head height from here, I mean, I'm two meters from the ceiling at this point. So a great feeling of space. You've got these beautiful stainless steel handrails, which really are a work of art and make it very secure coming down. And then we come down into the actual uh, shower area. So the shower compartment, well, I think four people could sit in there or stand in there. You've got a seated area, overhead rain shower, separate shower head control here, and two frosted windows to the outside. And then on the starboard side, a very generous um, heads compartment itself. Again, with natural ventilation, two opening ports, storage locker for towels, etc. Now, again, I'm not quite sure how much comes out in the video. So you've got an under area here, like a foot area, drawer storage, again, with hanging rail on the front. And again, ample storage on both port and starboard sides here for towels, laundry, etc. And even another storage cupboard tucked away here. So plenty of space all the way through on the three levels uh, for storage, towels, clothing, etc. you'd need for extended cruising. There is a large access panel in the floor here as well, again, so a feature on all Sunseekers is that the major service points, no matter where they're located, you can always get easy access without having to remove, you know, tiling or um, carpet to get down to it as easy access. So coming back up the stairs, you, you just come back into this main area, which is, it's a huge space. I mean, a real feature of a yacht this size, sub 100 feet, um, to be able to get this much space into a master cabin is quite amazing and a real key feature. Coming off, we talked about the Weimar control. So you have the touch screen control here for all the lightings, setting zones during the day beautiful large windows all the way through. You've got a secondary desk come vanity area here again with footstool, storage drawer, shelving on the forward edge here, power, etc. on the aft edge. And then another feature, you've actually here got your own private access door to the foredeck. So open this up and we'll see later when we do the outside of the boat, but you've got easy access now round to a bow area for seating. Maybe that morning coffee or a late evening drink, easily accessed without having to go back through the saloon of the boat. So coming back out into this companionway where we started, you'll notice we've got a day head for guest use during the day. So easy access from the main saloon, very generous sized again, 
with sink and head. Here, more storage. So, both cupboards and shelving here. Maybe to get drinks during the day. Uh, can be even be storage for towels, etc. It's a very easy access for all the guests. Back into this main companionway. I think what we'll do next is go down to the lower deck cabins. And again, this staircase, great width, very easy stair treads. This leather clad handrail going all the way down is so very easy. And there's little details that make it interesting. Look at this raised panel with LED lighting set behind it. Makes a real difference when you're coming down the stairs here. Makes it a point of interest rather than just a corridor. Likewise, you get to here and you've got a glazed panel. This could easily have been a covered bulkhead, which would really have enclosed it. But here with the glass, I mean, it really opens up this space. You know, works fantastically well. So from here in this secondary foyer, again, more storage character for bedding, toweling, etc. here. And we'll go forward now through the passageway into what is the two smaller cabins, if you want, for this lower deck space. You'll notice the detailing all the way through, the split of material colours with the wenge stripping through the centre, makes it really interesting. The floor accesses again, we talk about this on every Sunseeker, giving you access, easy access down to major systems for maintenance points. Okay, so let's go from here into what is one of the smaller of these four cabins on the lower deck. But still, what a great space. I mean, look at that, two great size berths, both in width and in length. Um, ample lighting, the central mirror here is a real key feature and gets the light again. You'll see the mixture of materials really give it a great contemporary feel, but not cold in here. Starboard side, I mean, picture window, opening port again to get air throw through the, yacht, through the yacht if you've not got the air conditioning running. These two berths will slide together to make a double. So depending who's on board, how you want the boat configured, this can be two singles or a double. And again, storage wise, you've got fixed drawers underneath each bed here. So it makes easy storage. You haven't got to lift the mattress. Good size hanging wardrobe here on the forward end. And again, just a, can't quite see there, I don't think from the film, but you've got a great TV set into the wall here with audio visual with the speaker set in the ceiling. So again, you, even in the smallest cabin, you've got great audio visual features. I think we'll just go from here forward. You've got the ensuite, which, I mean, it's just a, still a great size. Oversized shower, rain head, shower head, complete with separate storage drawer underneath the sink here. Large mirror that lets a lot of light fill around the cabin, the head behind. And obviously if we open again this blind here, we actually do have the natural light coming in from an opening port light and a great storage locker right behind with hanging tower rail. I mean, for the fourth cabin, what a great ensuite. And again, you wouldn't feel like the poor relation uh, being given this cabin. We come out opposite. We've got, again, pretty much the same cabin, same features, same great size beds that can slide together. So remember on both this third and fourth cabin, you've got the ability to turn these into doubles rather than twin singles. So works very well depending on your guests or family you've got on board and a matching ensuite as we saw in the starboard side cabin. And let's just take a look at this door. So again, all of these doors are right through the yacht with these leather inset stitched panels are great details matched with the leather hand um, uh, door handles. And the door thickness, again, just get a, get a look at that. It just feels very, very uh, oversized, thick, and is obviously gonna give you great sound resilience with the seals you'll find on the doors when they're shut to cut out noise transmission between the yachts. Just one little thing that we'll do before we go back to the, uh, the larger of the two cabins is you'll see this panel here with the handle on it. 
because of the way this, the regulations this boat is built to, because it's actually built to arena specification, you do have emergency exits all the way through the lower deck accommodation. So if there was a problem in the master cabin, there is actually an access panel back through into this space. Vice versa, it can go either way. Just a little thing, but again, an added safety feature um, that's built into this yacht in the way it's um, actually, you know, regulation-wise, it's built to. So now we have two double cabins uh, with fixed double beds in each. We go into the starboard one here to give you an idea. Huge window. Again, I'm not sure how it comes out in the film, but that window is pretty close to two meters long by about 60 centimeters high. Great amount of natural light coming in. Opening port in the center. So again, if you want natural airflow coming through, um, very easy to do so throughout this lower deck. Great features with the squared paneling in the ceiling, built-in flush mounted um, uh, audio speakers and the TV then obviously facing the bed. The detail on the coloring is stunning. The mixture of the Wenge, the dark materials and then soft tactile lighter linings really work well, exceptionally well. Storage wise on the outer side there, you'll see you have a unit with four drawers and shelf stowage. Doubles as a bedside cabinet on that forward end. Similar here on the aft end, a smaller cabinet with twin drawers and shelf. You've got an oversized wardrobe on that forward bulkhead with a glazed mirror there. Again, just really doubles with this mirror behind me to give that bouncing of light all the way through the cabin. Four drawers underneath the bed. The bed itself has four pull-out drawers. Again, so there's no need to raise the mattress to access those. And then again, forward into what is again a great sized ensuite. Mirrored door storage over the top of the sink. Drawer underneath. And then again, a huge shower space, all matched in this Minerva stone, which, which looks beautiful. The colouring on it is stunning and with an opening port and shelf on the outer edge. Again, a stunning guest cabin. I mean, it really, you know, the amount of space around the bed, the detailing just works exceptionally well. And obviously this is just one of two. So you have a identically matched cabin on this port side as well, matching uh, the space you know, in all ways of the starboard size. So it works very, very well. So that's four guest cabins down below, configured as two fixed doubles, two converting singles. So easy space for eight guests here, plus that beautiful triple level master cabin. Okay, so you come to the top of the steps into the companion way again. Beautiful picture window, storage lockers all the way through, and you'll see that that's a feature all the way through the yacht. And we come now into what is a stunning space of the saloon aft, dining forward, picture windows all the way round. I mean, you've got sort of 270 degrees of glazing in here, which when you mix with the, the lining, soft, you know, light linings, the timber uh, feature wood really offsets it well with a combination of the mirrors bouncing the light around. And if we come right to the starboard side here, first thing we'll show is you've got this side opening door, which not only acts as light and air coming through, but also leads then to the fold down balcony that we talked about from the outside. So again, here you've got button controls, which will drop this down to 90 degrees horizontal, drop in rails go on, and then you've got even an area that you can sit watch the world go by, or it just gives you that perfect view from that saloon space out into the water. Works great. And the kids are gonna love jumping off it as well. So it works for everyone. Coming back, we come to an inset um, uh, carpeted area. So all of the, the main saloon, the companionway, the saloon area here is actually finished in a European oak uh, flooring, which is obviously exceptionally durable and gives it a great look. But then both in the saloon seating area and the dining, we've got a beautiful inset carpet space. 
which leads to the, the main dining table. Easy seating for eight um, and serving space. Even if the chairs you know, are in the position where somebody will be seated, you've still got plenty of room to get past to actually serve food, drinks, etc. On this side is really dedicated to a serving unit. So we've got great storage space for crockery, glassware, uh, tableware, all the way through. And this beautiful unit, which is a combination of a metallic gray lacquer with stainless steel inset detail, and then a beautiful uh, quartz stone top. Um, so again, will work very well for setting out food, drinks and everything for serving onto the main dining table. Now obviously, with a beautiful dining area such as this, you need to be able to service it from a, you know, from a galley that really works. And this is what you have here, which, you know, this size of yacht, it can be kept completely open if it's more of a, a family run yacht or if it's a, a crew run, you know, crew serving, doorway shuts off completely, soundproofed again, even with that beautiful detailing still in the door, but completely isolates the galley. If we come into here, it, it, it's just a, a, a maze of space. This is storage all the way through. Storage on the lower level here on the outside, plus granite countertop space. On the center area here, wine cooler, more storage, and then full-size dishwasher forward. Great countertop again for holding, you know, holding food, holding drinks ready to serve into the uh, dining space. Coming further forward, we've got another direct access out to the outer areas for the boat. Really important if the crew or guests are bringing supplies onto the boat, they haven't got to walk it all the way through the saloon space. It comes in and straight into the galley. And of course it gives natural light, natural ventilation into the galley space. So once you've come through that corridor, you come into a great size galley which has storage lockers all the way around the outside, such as this, great countertop space, storage, storage drawers all the way through this lower level. Good size oven and four hob here with the extractor over the top. Miele double convection microwave at the top here. But if we come back to this aft bulkhead, I mean, if you're doing any sort of extended trip, you, you're gonna want a large amount of refrigeration. And here you've got a stainless steel commercial sized unit which we use as well on the 115, 130 footers, which has four separate stainless steel um, sections, which each one can be dedicated to freezing space or refrigeration with these separate control knobs at the top here. So really suits if you're doing a few days away or for an extended trip where you might need more freezing you know, it's very, very flexible and just, it's so tactile, it feels beautiful. I'd like that in my house, I think. Um, sink and drainer here on the inner side. You see again, storage above and below the sink. And you'll see there's a, their own audio system in here as well. So that's with controls back in this companion way. So it gives the crew ability to have some, uh, some music whilst they're working as well. And just behind the door before you go out, you'll see this use of storage all the way through and you'll actually see the crockery set for plateware, tableware, etc. stored away in that cupboard. So great use of space, lots of storage, lots of um, space to be able to cook for extended trips away and feed back to this dining area. Now what I like here is, although you've got quite a formal dining and then into this relaxed seating area, they flow very seamlessly together. So very, a bit more formal, a bit more relaxed, but the materials that have been used, the flooring and the detailing really work well together. And here, this sofa area, oh, I mean, you could sit eight people quite easily. This beautiful footstool come coffee table, you know, this section on top allowing drinks to go on 
whatever position you want that works exceptionally well very practical but looks stunning and there's storage underneath here as well for books magazines etc on the starboard side we have the 55 inch Ryzen 4 TV which would come out of here so if you want to sit there and watch the TV in the evenings works very well as a large group and you've even got these two loose chairs which again a nice seating area during the day facing the uh, the main seating or in the evening they can be moved back around to add the seating uh, the you know the viewing capability for the for the TV uh, nice little corner shelves on this unit again it's it's a TV unit but it's a beautiful piece of furniture with the grey metallic lacquer stainless steel detailing the little shelves to each side it's just beautiful to look at and I think that's the whole feature on this starboard side with the glazing running through the mirrored panels at the end which give the effect of extending that glazing even further through to these storage shelves here with again mirror inside and a storage cabinet underneath feels really spacious in this area and it's it's very well done with the mirrors and glazing just ever accentuating the amount of space so now we come back to the patio door um, now the whole idea with you know we've looked at throughout the Sunseeker range is how to really seamlessly use this main deck entertainment space and this door again not only opens for access so if we come over to this first section for normal access through to the aft deck maybe then you close again to keep air conditioning in but if you want to fully open up pull the button here and then we can push this door all the way back to the port side so now you've opened up this whole space which from that forward dining area back to the aft seating I would guess is somewhere in the region of about 10 to 12 meters maybe more of length and it's a seamless floor you'll see it's flush tracks for the sliding door the water gully here so it stops any moisture any water from transgressing into the saloon but it gives you that seamless one level look all the way through we have a secondary access down to the engine room here obviously really only as an emergency exit as your main access is through the crew cabin into the engine room so no need really for this except as a backup to that main entrance on the starboard side we have the staircase up to the flybridge that we'll go and look at later but again with a stainless steel handrail teak treads very well spaced it's a nice easy access staircase with a locker underneath which not only stores fire equipment but general storage as well now remember this boat is built arena so it is that one step above ce that does give you such things as firefighting equipment as the emergency exits smoke alarms everything all the way through the yacht that you won't get on a ce um, yacht only on this arena classification coming to the port side again fire extinguisher another nice little feature here is the ice maker for uh, filter so it uses tank water but cleaning it before it goes to the ice maker to give you better quality ice below that we have refrigeration serving the aft deck and the ice maker here on the aft end and another nice little detail which is sometimes forgotten but particularly in the med you'll be doing the bow lines now when you do the bow lines you've often got a rope that's sat in the water for a long amount of time and undoubtedly it's slimy it's dirty now what you can do is obviously once that's been done come back here you've got a little sink to wash your hands off um, little details but works exceptionally well right so your main seating again probably not getting the scale on the camera but this seating area I mean easy seating I would say for six or eight people massive table great place maybe to sit in an evening to have a drink breakfast first thing in the morning have a couple more director's chairs you could easily fit two or three here and you'll have the whole family seated you know on this aft deck and it's the little details it's not like a, a little spindly leg in the center you've got these four lovely oversized um, 
stainless steel tubes holding that table gives it a real feeling of solidity, a proper yacht feel. So that's a quick look at this aft cockpit. I think what we'll do from here is being this a five cabin on deck master, the other benefit you get from this configuration is the raised enclosed pilot house. So let's go back forward and this time we'll take the staircase up to that pilot house and have a talk through with Chris Head on the particular specification of this stunning 95 yacht. Here we are, we had a good look through the uh, lower decks, Chris, and we're sat now at the, uh, the enclosed pilot house. So tell us a bit more about the specification of this 95 yacht. She's a highly spec boat without going through every single detail. You know, the helm, the electronics is to a high standard. Uh, this boat has the uh, Sleipner stabilizers, which, you know, and that works underway and at anchor, Chris. Yes, I mean, the boat, it's, it's a weird sensation. You know, when, when you're running the boat, it feels like it's on rails. It really does. Um, so, you know, we all said we want stabilizers when she's at anchor, which is the main part of it. But actually, when you're running in a sea, and instead of the boat getting pushed off the way, it keeps her upright. It keeps her very flat running. Okay, the internal specification as well. I mean, they've, they've done a guy's a great job with the... The colourings, I mean, it's very contemporary, but easy, I think, for a, a client to make look their own. It's a very nice, nice specification. Well, Sean, you know um, Sunseeker, uh, with your design team and my interior designers, you know, we've really gone for each area of the boat. But the, the main thing about Sunseeker, when people come to the boat show and go on board Sunseeker, um, as soon as they walk on, they fall in love. And with most of our interiors we do, um, we do a good job, but I will say on this 95, we've gone overboard. So in terms of, you know, for a client, what would he be adding? I mean, what toys would you be adding on really to complete the spec? Um, well, the tender, which would recommend either a four, really 445 Williams. Uh, if you wanted a jet ski, we had provision for crane, so we'd have to add the crane. Sea bobs would go on top. Um, again, if somebody's going to run the boat um, for charter, we'd have to change the specification slightly, but not a deal breaker to be done. Okay, perfect. And in terms of communication, so what would you recommend? Is Sat, Sat TV a thing of the past now with streaming or? Well, we, we always leave Sat TV uh, off the boat. So once we know which nationality buys it, then if they do want satellite TV, it's easily added. To be, to be, to be truthful, um, most people now are not going for Sat TV. Uh, they're using their data cards and still getting Netflix and all the different things. So streaming on board is easily done. Okay, thanks, Chris. So we've talked about the interior specification, the electronics, AV, but obviously a key about any Sunseeker is how they run. So she's fitted with the twin 12V 2000 series MTUs. So they're 1,950 horsepower each still gives her a top end speed of around 27 to 28 knots and then an easy cruise at anywhere really from 10 knots all the way through to 20 depending on you know how you want to run the yacht now on screen now you should see some fuel consumption figures which will give you a a good indication of the range at those various rpms and as chris said with the st stabilizers fitted to this yacht even running, they really come into their own from 10 or 11 knots. So it does give you that ability. If you wanted to do longer distance, slow speed runs at comfort, no problem at all, because the stabilizers take away probably 90%, if not more underway of any lateral movement. So it makes a you know, great deal of improvement to the comfort on board. So with that, let's have a good look at what is this very impressive inner helm station. And the first thing you see, I think the key feature here, always makes me smile, this great pilot chair that you can imagine yourself sat in there with easy access to all the controls. And let's have a look through those. So you've got three 19 inch Simrad screens. Two of them are dedicated to nav and systems on board. So if you want plotter on one, radar on the other, autopilot controls, you can match different ranges, etc., on each one of these screens. 
coupled with another three SIMRAD displays there on the right hand side which then can separately indicate speed, wind direction, autopilot, rudder uh, position, etc. So you've got a great deal of space to really customize how you want those screens set up. And then you have the third large screen here is completely dedicated to the systems on board. So this will show you fuel, fresh water, grey water, um, your power. So if we go to the menu here, the DC metering, so what, what the voltage your batteries are at, where the shore power, which generators are running. And it's all touch screen. All the alarms come through the screen and it's very easily seen and very, very simple to use. So it makes the running of the systems on board much easier. If we complete this top row, we've got the two MTU um, main instruments here, which give you access to the engine data and information, uh, which obviously can be doubled onto these screens as well, so you've got it right in front of you. On the lower level, we've got a great storage pocket here um, with charging points inside, so USB points for phone, iPads, etc. Drink holders. These screens are a touch screen, but for ease of use when you're underway, you have also got a manual control here for all functions. So rather than using the touch screen, which can be a little bit tricky underway, you've got the manual control. Here is your control for the autopilot. And this one's actually fitted with the QS80 jog stick as well. So what this means is once your pilot is on, if you're in open water, you can use this control for very delicate movements in the steering rather than the wheel. And it, it's just a nice little extra feature here that you can use the pilot for the actual steering of the vessel. Coming through, all of these are the controls of the functions, so wipers, horns, uh, screen dimmers, nav lights, etc. are here. Uh, searchlight control, trim tab control here. Obviously your main engine controls, all electric and very, very, very positive, very, very easy to use. And obviously this links across here to the thrusters. So you've got hydraulic bow and stern thrusters, and they've got the proportional hold controls on them. So again, if you're coming alongside a dock with a wind, for example, that's pushing you off, once you're alongside, you can maybe gently put on 10% of thrust to starboard, which will hold the boat against the pontoon, against the dock, until you've got your main line secured. Nice little feature and on those days where you get different wind conditions, it can be extremely helpful. And obviously over here, you've got the VHF control. Coming down, main engine startup and alarm acknowledgements on the starboard side here and then obviously to the hydraulic steering itself. The steering even on such a big yacht uh, is fingertip and she still performs like a sun seeker. It will still put a smile on your face particularly we'll, we'll talk about that once we get to the flybridge helm but very very easy to run and carve some great turns. Uh, and you have got a dimmer control here for all the functions. So if you are running at night Dimming control here will take that lighting down. On the starboard side here, more central, we've got a massive uh, chart table. So you can get an admiralty sized chart laid out under the perspex screen. And this seat does swivel if you wanted to do your chart work before you're running. So you've got easy access there. Storage unit on the port side. Um, this top here, which would be great for plugging in any electronics, laptop, uh, iPad, etc. on here. Obviously it's fully air conditioned. You need that, you know, with all the glazing around. And for an enclosed pilot house, you know, the visibility through side and main screens is great. I mean, you've got a great, you know, 270 degrees of visibility. Now, where I sat, in, sat earlier in the video with Chris, this area here, for guests, for your family, when you're running, is great because you're slightly raised, you've still got a great view out, and it's just a really comfortable perch for when you're running along and want to be a bit protected from the weather. An easy seating for three or four people here with storage behind on the aft bulkhead and a separate uh, control head for the audio visual, uh, sorry, audio equipment here in the saloon, uh, in the pilot house. So, Great space, again, feels very much that you're on a much larger yacht sat here with all the controls to hand. 
but you know, in, in, an incredible feeling on what is still uh, only a 95 footer works exceptionally well. We come aft through this easy steps, all finished that European oak again, great handrail. We come through a glass and stainless sliding door onto what is a huge flybridge deck, uh, which will run through all the features in a minute. But first, whilst we've been talking about the helm, I'm going to drop myself in the seat here and you'll see what a great helm position. I mean, from here, I've got a stunning view all the way around the yacht. So for docking, either stood on the floor or stood on the seat here, visibility is amazing. And just look at the detailing on these seats. Carbon fibre, I mean, they're just stunning and very comfortable, very supportive. You've got a match of all your lower screen controls with the boat systems, twin Simrad uh, screens here in front of me. Obviously thrusters with the same uh, hole positions and you have here got the same uh, control for the um, Simrad screen. So again, rather than just using the touch sensitive, you've got the manual controls here as well. Very, very nicely laid out, very easy to use and very comfortable. Um, you know, you can imagine when you're running this, your visibility is amazing, which is key. We talked down there's about the steering and the helm and you, you know, we mustn't forget, although she's a large yacht, a lot of space, still she's a sun seeker with that deep V hard chine hull. So you start getting to that 24, 25 knots, pull the wheel, she still carves beautifully through the water. So we'll still put a big smile on your face when you're running this 95. So port side, we've got a great um, seating area for guests. Um, nice footstep here, so very easy enough to onto. And again, really comfortable if you're running, going forward, or maybe even when you're sat at anchor, it, it's just that little bit of separation to the rest of the seating area, but extremely comfortable, lovely place to sit. And obviously we're in this beautiful day in England today, and you can see the amount of light that's coming through above us. But hey, when you're in the med, or maybe you want a bit more shade, if you're going to sit there and maybe have some lunch at the push of the button obviously what we can do is close that light off and give some shade to these upper deck areas that slides forward beautiful carbon feature on this forward uh, sliding section and it all folds down neatly to give a lovely amount of shade all across this top deck now the good thing with this roof is it can be stopped in any position so if you want to semi-shade it still lets some light through very very easy to do so coming aft we come into probably the main entertainment space which is this beautiful seating area so it has storage lockers all the way through very good storage seating here easily for six to eight people very very comfortably more if you added some uh, 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 chairs on the outside here. If we extend this table out you'll then give you some idea of the scale of this area. Um, it is quite immense. I mean, this table folded out you can see that having lunch here for that whole family and guests very very easily done in a nice protected environment. And obviously to serve that area you need the wet bar. So Beautiful design from the outside, underlit lights and a beautiful curve to that moulding. A raised section here, what a better place to be sat, having your drinks at the end of the day on this beautiful bar space. Be stunning view all the way round and you're, you're raised enough that you get some airflow through so you're not feeling too confined. And in the bar itself, obviously all important with the sink, tap, We've got refrigeration, cool box in here. I mean, great with a cool air unit. You fill that full of ice and that's going to last all day. Underneath, we have an ice maker, refrigeration, and then obviously a griddle barbecue forward here. So really can serve all aspects of entertaining on this top deck. You'll see we've got the inset speakers here all the way through the flybridge. So six speakers in total. So again, this can be zoned. 
so you can have this as a separate zone for the audio visual or repeating in party mode all the same music all in all the areas on the outside of the yacht so coming off what hits you is the amount of space i mean you know there's great walkways great amount of space all the way through and we come to this aft area which really now is going to be a, a client choice now some people will just have loose furniture maybe some loose beautiful you know steamer style sun lounges could be more relaxed seating here uh, we could install a spa tub as an option chris mentioned earlier we've got the prep ready even for a crane so if you wanted a second tender or jet ski that can be lifted up onto this top section and you'll see the rails already have the thumb screws that allows you to remove them if you wanted that function of putting a second tender up you'll see you've got this extending canopy again the sun canopy is a push of a button to bring it right back into the to the arch or for extending out to give some protection on this deck from the sun and you'll notice here as well on this yacht is that she comes fully equipped remember earlier i said about the rena uh, classification so she's got the hard canister life rafts already fitted with water static releases set into them as well that's coming as standard on this yacht so from here if we come to the starboard side you've got the railing that protects the stairway and you'll notice as well i mean i've got to show you this i mean the detailing on what is a stunning um, hatch here not just a, a hatch it's a work of art with the black carbon finish and the stainless steel handrails uh, uh, locking rails it really does look great look at the open weave on the carbon here now this not only protects the stairway obviously from the weather but also it's important if you're here with a you know a, a deck full of guests putting that hatch down stops anybody from accidentally stepping through into the open stairway so with that let's go down now and we'll then take the foredeck um, area which we can have another good view of that outside another outside entertainment area so beautiful flybridge now back down into the aft cockpit that staircase is a delight to use by the way either you know coming actually down forwards it's the st stairs are beautifully spaced so if we come over to the port side here to get access to the foredeck let's just talk through a couple of the other features first of all these gates which are very easy to go lift drop round so it keeps the family and guests safe when the boat's underway keeps it nice and uh, uh, locked off on the walkway here and if we come back to the stern gear itself the actual uh, uh, mooring bollards etc you'll see that on the lower level we have a spring cleat so if we're med mooring uh, easy access for a, a cross spring at the halfway level there which is below the passerelle level which works exceptionally well what that also is because of the height of the of the the sides that if you are coming alongside and need to get a line on from the dock that's a very easy cleat to get hold of you'll see coming up through you've got these beautiful stainless steel bollards running lines through which are nicely curved as well so less strain on the rope itself up to what is an oversized bollard here aft with an electric warping drum just slightly forward so again, if you need to tighten those stern lines, particularly in the med where you're trying to pull the boat into the correct position, very easy to use. You've got an electric foot switch for that. So very easy to control whilst keeping both hands free. Once you've done that tail end of line, then you can open this locker and drop it away inside. So what that does is really takes away from having the line then curled up on the deck. So let's go forward and we'll start talking through all the feature as we go. So key as we go here, you'll see you've got this stainless steel drain plate across the deck. Little thing, but it means at the end of the day, when the deck's being washed off, that the water does run onto here and down through the drain rather than running out and through the aft deck. Particularly important if it's a crewed boat, maybe you're still enjoying the aft deck at the end of the day with guests and you don't want wash down water coming through very little detail but very nicely done the bulwark capping now this is a feature you'll see on a lot of yachts but normally it's in a solid teak which to be to be fair can be a nightmare in terms of maintenance and keeping it looking good 
So we've gone for this laminar effect, which is a, a, a grey. It's, it's not even a teak colour. It's actually a light grey colour that will stay looking like this permanently. Lack of maintenance, but that large yacht look with a beautiful contemporary capping. You'll notice here as we come through how high this bulwark is. Look at it. We're only just onto the side deck. So you're really protected. You don't need to hold on. You're just being, you know, really held securely on the side deck. So coming forward, you'll see this drop down in the superstructure here, which matches the windows. And what this does is give you that visi you know, visibility from the oversized windows in the saloon out to the water. And it's a lovely design feature, I think, when you see the look from the outside. Fuel locker, very easy access with your diesel fill and all of your shutoff points for the um, for the fuel valves themselves. And you'll notice a little feature here, the stainless steel um, upstand. So if you do get any dribbles of diesel here, it won't run onto the deck. Nice little feature, but makes a big difference. You've got lighting all the way through the side deck here. Great high rails still as we come forward. Midships cleat, one of two as we go forward. And you'll notice the stainless steel protective um, plating here to stop any chafing on the hull side or on this um, on the contemporary um, bulwark top here. And again, that plate, it must be about six mil thick. It really adds solidity in the design. Um, we mentioned this earlier, this is the doorway through to the galley. So the direct uh, access for the galley for provisioning. Look at the height of the rail now. I mean, you're really inside this yacht. Um, you'll see here the glazed panel and obviously the glazing for the master cabin. So you can just see how high, you know, we were talking about this. That's literally floor to ceiling height in the master cabin and obviously matching it with the glazing out through the outer bulwark. Lovely little feature and it looks beautiful from the inside. But when you see the exterior profile, it looks like an eye in the superstructure. It looks really good. Secondary spring cleat again with the protective plating. Storage locker here on the side of the combing and obviously that's matched on the starboard side as well. And now we come forward to this forward terrace area because this is what it is. I mean, this seating, although it's access for all the guests, if you remember earlier in the presentation, we showed the door from the master cabin on that starboard side. And this obviously brings them straight round to this almost private terrace area. I mean, you imagine first thing in the morning coming up here for your coffee. I mean, what a beautiful place to be as you're sat anchored in a, a lovely bay. And above that, you do have steps up to a immense sunbathing space. Um, give you some idea, that's probably getting on for five and a half metres in length by three and a half to four metres wide. I mean, you could get the whole family up there on that upper level. Works very, very well. Now to the business area of this four peak. So we've got a twin anchor setup. Now, this is very useful if you are you know, forced to be anchoring in a very windy condition. You can obviously set the anchors in a Y format, but more it's great as a backup. So if you do get a problem with, you know, losing an anchor, locking an anchor in some rocks where it means you have to drop it, you've always got a secondary backup. So it works very well. Both of them are held back with these devil's claw. So make sure that they're very secure underway. And you've actually got on deck brake control for the drums as well. So it really gives you a great deal of control over deploying and recovering the anchor chain. Two fair leads forward. So your bow lines, if you're med mooring up through there, one turn on the cleat. And obviously then you can use either windlass to tighten those bow lines up before making off on the cleat. As we kept on mentioning throughout the spec on this boat, it is built to arena specification and a ship's bell is uh, part of that specification uh, for your a, a, a way of alerting other yachts of your position. And as much as it's an important safety feature, it also just looks beautiful sat up here, really adds to the, the yacht feel of this 95. You've got twin access lockers down to the four peak, down to the chain locker. And obviously both of these can accommodate oversized fenders as well. So great amount of storage. 
that gives you a good view of this bow. Um, I hope you can see that it, it really works exceptionally well as a private terrace or as just part of the external entertainment space. But from that, let's walk back aft now and we're going to look at the bathing platform area and the crew cabin. Okay, so we've got easy access down to the bathing platform on both the port and starboard sides. Great hand holes, but really easy steps down. And now you get to see what is a huge platform space. This is the full beam of the boat. So six meters by about two and a half meters in length. And um, importantly, you actually still keep this fixed walk around. So even if the platform's down, you can actually walk around the stern here as well. As Chris said earlier, easily accommodate a 445 or 460 Williams on the platform. And obviously at the push of a button, it drops down to about knee height underwater, which is not only great, easy launch and recovery of the tender, but it's just such a great way of relaxing at water level. You can, with the platform under the water, swim on and off very easily, bring it up to water level, and you can just sit here on a, maybe a director's chair with your feet in the water. What better way of enjoying that interaction with the sea? Once your tenders are launched, there's two pop-up cleats, both port and starboard, so you can tie off the tenders very easily. And you'll notice here as well, you've got two sockets to accommodate a uh, large stainless steel handed um, uh, boarding ladder, as well as having obviously the ability to swim on and off and a small ladder here on the port side anyway. So it's just nice if you do want a ladder in and out, you've got a large section there. So on starboard side, we have the services locker. So this opens up and hides away shore power. So this one has the Glendenning system. So it's an automatic cable in and out, saves you coiling it up. Uh, it has a secondary shore power if you want more power coming into the boat, depending what you're running. And obviously access points for water and for shore TV. We've got a very large locker, storage locker here. That accommodates the boarding ladder that we've just talked about, which drops in the sockets at the stern. Uh, as you can see, we've got lots of covers in here at the moment, but also the ideal place, you would get two or three um, sea bobs in here quite easily and a nice height to actually get them onto the bathing platform and use them. So that works exceptionally well. Coming across on the port side, we've got two more storage lockers here, one above the other. So those just both open up here. And then hidden in the, uh, the aft structure is the crew access. So let's open this up. So it opens up nice and high, easy access in, great headroom. You're not stooping down to get into this. And the crew cabin can accommodate four crew in bunked cabins. Plus you do have an occasional seating area that can convert into a fifth bunk if required for occasional, uh, if you've got extra guests on board. So if we come down below, um, like I said very easy access in. Everything has been finished in a very uh, tough, wipe clean finish. So lacquer doors, laminate bulkheads, laminate flooring. So very easy for the crew to keep on top of in terms of cleanliness, um, salt water, anything like that. Very, very easy. You've got here a unit which accommodates a separate washer and dryer. So quite important if you're doing extended cruising, particularly for things like towels that you can wash and dry separately. And that does cover over with a pull down door here, which hides it away quite nicely. Obviously fully air conditioned all the way through. They've got their separate audio and visual system in this cabin space and a repeater of the ship's system. So you remember at both helms, we had the touchscreen panel which showed all of the boat systems. There is a repeater for that here and obviously a repeater for the VHF in this cabin space as well. One thing I'd like to point out, I mean, being the crew cabin, A, it's very nicely finished. Um, the seating is very practical, works well, but look at these windows all the way across as well. So you've got a huge amount again of natural light coming in. So a great area when the crew do want to relax at the end of the day, 
they're not feeling confined in a very small space. So as we said, we've got cabin space, both port and starboard with twin bunks. Um, so good space. And very importantly, I think for the crew, is that the bathroom, the head, the shower is separated. So it's not a wet cell within the cabin. So you've got a nice space for the actual head itself and a separate watertight shower compartment. Outside that, in this companionway area, they've got their own little galley, so sink, tap, hot and cold water, microwave and refrigeration, then obviously some storage space above and below the sink. And you'll see there their own uh, audio control, which obviously will run um, only in, into this cabin, so they can listen to what they want to. More storage here on the forward bulkhead. And from there, let's go through through this stunning door. I mean, this is a proper watertight door into the engine room. So the engine space itself, I think is <laughs> just as impressive as the internals that we've seen on this yacht. I mean, it's beautifully light, clean. Everything's white or an off sh shade of gray with mirrored um, insulation on all the bulkheads to keep down noise and heat insulation from the rest of the yacht. So you have your twin 12V 2000 MTUs, which, I mean, they actually feel quite small in this engine room, believe it or not, but easy access to all uh, daily maintenance points. And you'll see there, you have your traps in the floor that easily lift up to gain access to anything needed within the bilge area, down to water strainers, etc. This boat is actually fitted with also the triple generator setup. So it's got three 20 kilowatt gen uh, cola generators. This has been done not only for security numbers, i.e. redundancy, if you had an issue with one of the two normal gen sets, you have the third, but also for noise. So if you are running later in the day, maybe in a secluded bay somewhere, obviously you can maybe reduce the power consumption down to only running one of the three generators at a much reduced uh, noise level. You'll see forward here, we have the Atlas shore control unit. So again, we'll ensure that no matter what power you've got coming into the boat, that this unit will take care of the power levels to ensure that it protects all the equipment on board. And obviously this very impressive forward bulkhead, which basically gives you all the control over the AC and DC systems and fuses, breakers throughout the yacht. Beautifully laid out. I mean, again, there's acres of space in here to move around and get to everything easily and safely. Um, one last thing before we go back, you'll see you have two uh, cameras here as well, which actually do feed up to the Simrad screens at the helm. So one thing that's quite important when you're running, I feel, on any yacht of any size is that you have regular checks in the engine room. And by having these cameras, it means that it alleviates the, uh, the problem of trying to come down whilst you're running and see what's going on. So another great feature and that will highlight on the screens at um, either of the helms. It's a very nice little feature to have. With that, I think we'll go from here back up to the top decks and maybe sit down again with Chris and talk about what Sunseeker London Group can offer a client on this particular yacht. So Chris, we've had a great look round outside, inside. We've been in the engine room, we've been everywhere. Uh, stunning yacht. I mean, really, it really is stunning inside. Um, so tell us what Sunseeker London Group then can offer a client. What, what do they do? What do we do? Um, obviously, um, we are the uh, largest distributor for Sunseeker boats, but um, what can we do for the client? When they buy a yacht from us of any size, whether it's a 50 footer all the way through to a 50 meter, um, our customers should get the same service and they will get the same service. Um, it's from meeting the salesman, agreeing the price, agreeing the contract, then they may ask, you know, can I have finance on the boat? Yes, you know, we use uh, three lenders, uh, Lombard, CGI and Close Brothers, who come up with some fantastic uh, financing products. The deal is done, pay their money, 
and then we deliver the yacht. So delivery of the yacht, it's from finding crew to take the boat down, employing crew for the client to keep, you know, for hopefully forever. Choosing the right crew is a very important part of the purchase uh, and owning the yacht. Um, but once they get the yacht down to the Mediterranean or if they're going to use it in the UK, we have a number of branches where they will be looked after. So in fact, uh, yeah, we have 40 offices throughout Europe. Um, therefore, the client should get seamless service from whichever office he goes into. It should be treated in the same way. That's fantastic. So really, the client purchasing here, I mean, he purchased potentially in the UK, but could be from anywhere in Europe and you can actually take care of everything from finance, delivery, and obviously then end customer service throughout the Med. Yeah, Sean, and it's not only the boating side of it, you know, a yacht like this, the client might say, Chris, we'd like to go to the Grand Prix in Monaco next year. That's the sort of thing we can arrange. We can, if we book early enough, we can get them a berth for the Grand Prix. And that, the service goes onwards. Um, I, I've mentioned this before, um, a client buys an expensive motor car, you, you can spend millions of pounds on motor cars today. They deal with a salesman once, then it's taken over by service division. They do not speak to that salesman again. With boating, the salesman is the key contact. Great. So Chris, as we said, we've had a great look round. You've explained what the London Group can do. So for anybody that is interested, they make contact with you. How, how do they do that? Well, they can call me, my number's above, but um, any one of my teams in any of the Sunseeker Group's offices, they can contact. Whether it's about this yacht, this yacht is available. A great deal can be done on this yacht, but if they're interested in a used boat, um, a brokerage boat, a charter a boat, they can speak to any one of my team, and I would hope they would, would talk them through the ownership of yachting. Okay, great. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for anyone that's taken the time for walking through this beautiful 95 yacht with us today and i hope you uh you do take the time to make contact with one of the sunseeker london group and hopefully we can keep you as a client going forward